Well, hello out there, and we want to welcome you. We're glad to have you with us. This is a message that I love to, I preach it many, many times, and it never gets old, it never, it never uh, gets tiring. It's one of the first stories we learned when we were children. And we sing the song all the time, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. And, and uh, we know that through the fighting of that battle, the walls fell down. Well, there's, there's a number of reasons of why that wall came down. Now, first of all, those, the, the, the city of Jericho, they had just crossed over the Jordan and were entering the Promised Land. Jericho was blocking the way into the Promised Land that God had given to the nation of Israel. So it, it had to be taken. It was, a, it was a, not a small city. It covered seven acres. And so, you know, we think of old-timey things as little, teeny, itty-bitty. They did some pretty good stuff back in those days. They had walls so thick that they could race chariots on top of the walls. They were that wide. They were like highways. They were thick. And so uh, I want to read the text from Joshua 6, and, uh, and then I'm going to give, you know, you may be facing a Jericho, that you may be up against a huge, huge problem. Maybe this very strategy will help you overcome and bring down the walls that are hindering you today. Let me, let me read the text, Joshua 6, write it down, Joshua 6. Verses 3 through 5. Now this is what God's word tells the people of Israel to do. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. Now, now, the, the trumpets signify warfare. And the, so they were to blow the trumpets. The ark signifies the presence of God. God was with them. And then it says, But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets, it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with a ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Joshua six, fifteen through 20. But, it, but we go on here. <clears throat> but it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of that day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around Several seven times, and the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you this city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction. It and all who are in it, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She, Rahab who was a prostitute, lived in the city of Jericho. They had sent spies first to check out the terrain. When they got to Jericho, they became aware that they were looking for them. They were, they were a, Jericho uh, alliances had, had figured out that there were spies somewhere in the city. Rahab, the prostitute, hid them, protected them. And it says only, so, and under the, under the promise that they would spare her, 
when they took the city. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all who are with her in the house. By the way, Jesus came from her line. For you religionists out there, you, you perfect people, she was from the line, in the line of Jesus. But because she hid the messengers that we sent, and you by all means abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it happened. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Now, when you read this inspired word of God, I'm sure that there were people, just like today there are people, they had, and Israel was kind of noted for complaining and griping. There was probably at least a few people in that group that said, this sounds ridiculous. Are, are, are you insane? Now, notice, notice in the beginning, these were men of war. I, I guess if they wanted to, they could have just attacked these walls as men of war. They were probably used to doing that. But God had a strategy. God had a, had a plan. And thank God there was level-headed people who listened. Joshua was a man of war. We think that he learned how to fight under the Egyptians. Might have even entered into some battles with the Egyptians. And so after he took over from Moses, when Moses was not permitted to go into the promised land, he became the strategician and the leader of the nation of Israel. So he had the ability to make war, but he listened to God. And so, and so what we have here is we have a strategy from God. And the three keys of that strategy are very evident. Number one, waiting. Number two, walking. And number three, no talking. They, they were told, keep your mouth shut until we give you orders to shout. And, and I think that's imperative because what we have a tendency to do is open our mouth and defeat ourselves. We'll say, well, th we start analyzing what God is asking us to do. Well, that's ridiculous. That's stupid. That's not going to work. So they were told, keep your mouth shut. Wh which really emphasizes the need to speak the word of God and to believe the word of God and not doubt it. So trust and patience and obedience were important to their success. And I believe trust, patience, and obedience are vital to our successes uh, for today. Now, that, now, in a sense, they marched day after day with no apparent results. I'm sure there were people there that had started out complaining, saying, ended up saying, see, I told you so. I told you it wouldn't work. And so, so we see the power of worship was a vital element in the bringing downs of these of, of these walls well, well see god is a god of worship and the ark led the procession the presence of god we should bring in usher in the presence of god how through worship god inhabits the praises of his people 
and the and the continual trumpet blowing that that summons that that was used to signal warfare gatherings moving at, at the call of god so the trumpets were were important it signaled to the people the number 7 symbolizes perfection 12, the number 12 is completion. The number, number four is, is earth's number. Six is man's number. Six, six, six. So numbers were very important in the lives of those Israelites. And seven symbolized perfection. Notice it was seven times. And, and it symbolized what God was going to do. The absolute mighty work of God was about to take place. Now, now what is the key thing here? Marching for God will cause the walls of defiance to fall from your life. Years ago, we don't do that much anymore, but it was common. We would have what we call Jericho marches. And the church would get excited through praise and worship and music and clapping and certain songs and out the doors that whole congregation would go and they would march around the church and we would call it a Jericho march and it, and it just would would incite us it would it would encourage us it would just fill us full of hope and gladness so so what did those big high thick Seven acres of walls represent to the people of Israel a hindrance. It hindered them. It was going to keep them from their possession. Now, we, we, can, we can parallel that wall of hindrance. Maybe you're surrounded or you're facing a wall of hatred. Romans 5.5. 5. And, and yet, what did God do with these people when they were confronted with these walls and they begin to walk? He put hope in their hearts. See, hope does not disappoint. It says, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The Holy Spirit brings us hope when we get the Holy Spirit on the scene going before us, it, it, it builds hope in us. Maybe, maybe you're facing a wall of poverty. You say, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. This COVID has put me out of work. My little business is struggling, suffering. Well, you may be facing a wall of poverty today, Luke 6, 38. But we have a key to overcome poverty. Give, and it will be given to you. You may be saying, are you crazy, Pastor Gary? I just told you I'm facing a wall of poverty. How can I give? Give what you can. But give something. Give of yourself. Come out and do something for the church. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use it, it will be measured back to you. You know, giving requires something. It, 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 it's, it's an offensive offensive thing that you do it's a verb it requires action so many times when we're facing walls of poverty or violence or hatred we're paralyzed with fear our tendency is to do nothing well most of the time we don't do nothing we talk we defeat ourselves this will never work they'll never come down 
well, if God would only only tell me how he's going to meet these needs. God doesn't owe you or me an explanation. It's called trust. You just have to trust God sometimes. Maybe you're dealing with a wall of rebellion. You say, you know, I have a really hard time with authority. Well, you need to read Psalms 133.1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. How? In unity. Maybe you find that hard to do. You say, I just, I just not real crazy about people. I have a hard time with people. I know this is a, a fairly short lesson. I'm not going to belabor it. I'm going to conclude with this very last statement. God God's ways may seem strange at times. I, I admit that. I, God's asked me to do some things that I think. I've, I've talked back to God. God, are you, are you kidding me? But God's way is the right way. God's way is the only way. I, I've shared this story a number of times, but it makes the point. I was struggling with a kidney stone. I went to... A hospital, to a doctor, to emergency. He said, oh yeah, you got a kidney stone. You'll pass it in about two or three days. Three weeks later, I still hadn't passed that stone. And when it moved, it was like shoving an ice pick in my back. I thought, oh my God, this is terrible. I thought I had a ruptured appendix when I, the, the night that it came upon me. And, and finally... After about three weeks, God said, I want you to do this for me. I said, well, what? I mean, it, came, it was an inner knowing. God didn't say, hey, kid, I want you. He, it was just knowing inside. He said, I want you to get down on your knees, and I want you to praise me. And I, I remember saying this to God. God, you've got to be kidding. This is so painful, I, I, I don't think I can get on my, and I didn't want to make it move. And God said, well, I want you to get on your knees and praise me. So I did. I finally caved and gave in, like, like I usually do. I usually maybe argue with God a little bit, but I'll give in. And I got on my knees, and I began to praise God. And after I'd praised God for a while, God said, now, go back, lay on the bed, just lay on the bed you're going to pass these stones at 11 o'clock tonight and I, I don't think I said yeah you're sure I am but I I, I, I could have at 11 o'clock that night and you have you have to strain your urine you got a little strainer no dignity nothing so well, I have to go to the bathroom and I went in and I got my little strainer and lo and behold, out, plunk, 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 these three big kidney stones at 11 o'clock that night. I'm telling you, it, it can be a wall like Jericho. It can be a wall of sickness. It can be a wall of poverty, hatred, rebellion. It could be many types of walls. Do what God tells you to do. Use God's strategy, waiting, walking, and no talking. Unfortunately, I wish I could say to you, uh, in all my life, I've never talked back to God, but I'm, I'm, I'd be lying to you. Sometimes I talk too much. But God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you to the ends of the earth. Trust God to that end. I don't care how high, how thick, how big the wall. If God can bring a wall like this down with this strategy, he can bring your walls down too. And he's brought many, many walls of different types in my life down by waiting, walking, and keeping my mouth shut, no talking. 
until God tells you. You know, there's a time, then you, then when, when you, your wall comes down, then shout and praise God. Hallelujah. I was real happy when those kidney stones popped out of me, rolled out of me. And I praise God for that. Well, thank you for being with me. I hope that I've taught you something that you can use to be successful and overcoming the pitfalls of the enemy. So be blessed in God. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Let us know if you need prayer. Send us a prayer card. We'll be happy on Saturday or through the week to make prayer for you. In Jesus' name. See you next time.